Hello, everyone. Good to see you again. And uh, this video is for the lab demonstration video for our third lab, RFM analysis for CD now in Excel. All right. Uh, if you've not yet downloaded the lab material and answer sheet and the data files, please download them. And in this lab, yeah, you may have two different data files. One is the CD now, this file, the CD now, I already yeah, opened it. So CD now underscore RFM underscore the clean data, this file. And you also have the zip file. The zip file is the original file. So basically this lab uh, was, uh, is based on the academic, the series of the academic papers written by the Professor Pete Bader and Professor Bruce Harvey. And they actually yeah, used uh, the data, this, this data in their, uh, their uh, academic articles and their academic research. And I just, uh, and this data set is now public. Okay, so they opened the data set yeah, for free. So I downloaded it and I just cleaned the data first for your convenience. So the original, original data file is also available and that zip file is the, contains the original yeah, data file. So the original data file is a little bit messy. So it is difficult to, a uh, little bit difficult to, just clean the data for uh, the RLFM analysis. So uh, maybe in the, if you uh, see, if you have the, your lab material, then here. So it, this, uh, this material has appendix in page. So here, yeah, from page 10 to, Page 15, yeah, there's an appendix. And then I just show, yeah, how I clean the data, okay? So if you are yeah, very, very interested in the cleaning procedure, so you can just refer to yeah, this appendix. But yeah, if you don't want to do that, so yeah, you don't need to do that, okay? So just for uh, your information. All right, then now let's get started. So, we are gonna do the LFM analysis with this the CD now data. And first let's look at the data for data, okay? So this is a, yeah, maybe you are very familiar with this type of data so because we already yeah used this kind of data purchase histories, the purchase histories of the customers of the one of the grocery store, right? And very similar to that kind of a the data set. So this data uh, contain the purchase history of how many customers. So just let me show. Yeah, about uh, 2,300, 2,357 customers purchase history. Yeah, from the one of this, uh, the, the, the city now store. Okay. And here it has Four variables: ID, date, spend, and period. So ID is the contains the customer indicator, so the customer number. Okay, and date indicates the purchase date, and the spend uh, indicates yeah how much uh, each customer spent uh, in each yeah, purchase record or the purchase history, and then period. Yeah, I'm gonna explain this variable a little bit later, okay? All right, so let's try to interpret the first record, the first transaction. So this first transaction says, the first customer spent about $29.33 at January 1st, 1997. All right, so here, yeah, I am using, and this data set is using a little bit different uh, date format. So the format of the date is year first and month and the date. There's a reason. So with this format, yeah, 
we can simply uh, <coughs> compare, we can simply compare which date is more recent. Okay, so here's an example. Okay, so let me use uh, this uh, blank code file. Okay, so let's think about 2020 January. Yeah, first 2020. Okay, and the let's think about the December. Okay, sorry, first. 2020. Okay. And as of as of January 1st, 2021, 2021, December 31st is more recent than January 1st, right? And then now let's <coughs> express this date in the format used in the data. Then this January 1st, 2020 becomes 2020 January, so 01, and the first, so 01. Okay. And how about December 31st, 2020 becomes 2020 December, that is 12, and 31st. And this number is eight digit number. And this eight digit number is bigger than this eight digit number, right? So we can just automatically compare these two numbers and this number is bigger than this number, right? So, so we can simply conclude that, oh, the date yeah, associated with this format, this number huh, is more recent huh, than the number associate uh, the uh, this number, which is associated with the January first. Okay, so we can simply uh, compare the da actual date by the simple comparison, yeah, between two, yeah, arithmetic numbers. So that's why we are using yeah this date format. Okay, so this is a little bit maybe yeah you are. So maybe you are uh, from East Asia, like the South Korea, Japan, and China. You are very familiar with this type of data format, but yeah, but yeah, the other you know, students may not uh, be familiar with this data, data format. All right, so let's go back to the data, the first record. So in the first record, we can see the first customer spent about $30, at January 1st, 1997. All right, and then let's move on to the next record. The same customer, the first customer, okay, spent about $30, okay, another $30 at, uh, on the January 18th, 1997, okay? And let's move on to the next transaction. And on the <clears throat> August 2nd, 1997, the same customer, so the first customer, spent about $15 in the CD Now store. Yeah. And let's move on to the next uh, the record, next transaction. December 12, 1997, the customer, the same customer, spent about $26.5. Okay. So here in this data set, there are full transaction history yeah, of the first customer, okay, in the order of time. Okay. Then let's look at the period variable now. So the for the first transaction, yeah, the period variable says it is first. So the first, the value first here indicates that transaction is the first transaction of the customer, the customer number one in this data set. And the second transaction and the third transaction, the period variable says it's there in the calibration period. So yeah, calib, 
C-A-L-I-B. Calib stands for this calibration period. And the last transaction, the period variable says valid. It stands for validation period. So yeah, you may remember what we are gonna do in this RFM analysis is that we are gonna split the data into two different time periods, okay? So the entire time span uh, is from January 1st, 1997 to June 30th, 1998. The midpoint is the October 1st, 1997. And so, <clears throat> The first half, uh, the first half of this entire time period uh, is the calibration period, okay? And the second half of the data is the validation period. And the transaction, which was, which were, transactions which were made in uh, this calibration period, uh, they are classified as the calibration period data and the transactions which were made in the validation, the second half of the, 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 the entire time period are classified as the validation period data, okay? So we split, we split the data. I already split the data into these two different time periods. And then what we are gonna do is that we are gonna first focus on the data in the calibration period only, okay? With this, only with the first half data, we are gonna characterize the customer's purchase pattern by recency metric, the frequency metric and monetary value metric, LFM matrix. So we are gonna first compute the LFM matrix for only the data in the calibration period. And then with those LFM matrix, we are gonna compute recency score or recency rank and frequency score or frequency rank and monetary value score or monetary value rank. Then with those recency score, frequency score, LFM scores, we are gonna classify the customers mm -hmm. into several groups. And then those classification, if those, if, and then based, based on the, those classification, we are gonna make a prediction of who's gonna, who was gonna, profitable in the next time period, the validation period, okay? If the LFM matrix and the LFM score, LFM analysis works well to characterize the customer's pattern and to predict the future customer purchase, the future customer's net spending, the future customer profitability, and then if, if the RFM analysis works well for that, then what we can expect? The classification of the customers based on the LFM scores must clearly yeah, classify the customers uh, into the group, the different groups. One is a, the group of the customers who spend a lot in the future period, the validation period. And the other group, yeah, of the customers who spend just relatively less. That is the, the uh, we did in, in, the, in the validation period. So if our firm works well for the prediction, we can expect that the classified, the customer, the classification result of the, uh, the customers based on our FM scores, should clearly divide the customers into the group uh, or into the different groups 
One is the high profitability group, and the other one is the low profitability group. And how can we measure the profitability? Frequency and the monetary value yeah, will be used the profitability measure here, okay? So we are gonna compute the fre frequency and the monetary value, which is the same as the net spending, okay? During the period. So we are gonna, com we are gonna compute the frequency and the monetary value or gain in the validation period. Uh, and then we're gonna compare those values between the different groups classified based on the LFM scores from the calibration period. Okay. So yeah, a little bit difficult. So just let me uh, uh, explain this again. We are gonna classify the customers based on the LFM scores in the first half of the data. Then we are gonna classify the customers into several groups. If this works well, one of the group clearly show relatively and significantly high level of frequency and the monetary value in the validation period. And the other group must show relatively and significantly low uh, frequency and the monetary value in the validation period. That's what we are gonna do. And this method, uh, this uh, procedure is called the hold out validation. This is called hold out validation. So we are gonna do the hold out validation for our FM analysis with this CD now data set. Okay. So now let's do that. Okay. The first step I already. <coughs> Uh, divide the data into the calibration period and the validation period. So we have this period value, okay? It indicates in which uh, period the each transaction uh, is in, okay? And then, but we have the one more indicator value, the first value. Here, let's look at the this fourth customer. The fourth customer, this customer just purchased only once in this time period for uh, uh, about 18 in a month. Then let's think about just only one transaction history. It means that this is a CD now data. So at that time, the customers purchased a CD, huh, which the contains the songs huh, in a small, huh? A, the circular disk, okay. Then <clears throat> so there's only one transaction, then it means that this customer just uh, purchased the CDs only once and this customer yeah, highly is highly likely just one time, yeah, customer, okay. And then usually those kind of a one-time customers just show very random pattern yeah, of the purchase, okay? So it is very difficult to extract a kind of a stable and valid patterns of the purchases from only one single observation. It is difficult, it is almost impossible, okay? so. To avoid confusion, yeah, with this these this type of a customers, we are gonna uh, just uh, get rid of these type of a customers from the analysis. To do that, that's why yeah, we put uh, additional indicator for the very first transaction, yeah of each customer. So it means that we are gonna compute the recency metric, frequency metric, monetary value metric, okay? Only for uh, the transactions for the 
uh, only from the second transactions transaction to the last transaction. Okay, so we are gonna we are we are not gonna use the first transaction yeah, of each customer when we compute the out recency metric and frequency metric and the multiple variable metric. Okay, that's why we have yeah, this first indicator. All right, then what we are gonna do first, yeah, we already divide the data. I already I already divided the data into the these two time period, and then we are gonna do the LFM analysis, the whole data validation for our LFM analysis. And first step, first step should be the computation of the recency metric, the frequency metric, the numerical variable metric. Okay, so now let's do that. All right, so go back to the Excel spreadsheet. Recency is a little bit tricky. So first let's compute the frequency, the frequency metric, okay? All right. We are gonna use the pivot table to extract the frequency metric from the data, okay? So just click any non-empty cell, okay? And then go to the insert tab. Then, uh-oh, I need to, yeah. Enlarge the window here. Okay, so click any empty cell, a uh, non-empty cell, sorry, and just click this pivot table icon in the insert tab. Okay, then Excel automatically detected the range of the data. Just click OK, and just let me zoom in. All right, we need to compute the frequency for each customer okay so the shape of the table each row maybe may stand for each customer okay so here the customer id that is the customer indicator oh sorry okay so we need to drag this customer id and drop it into rows Okay, and then now you can see there are the customer ID in each row. All right, and then how to compute the frequency? What is the definition of the frequency? The frequency is the number of the purchases, right? So it means that we need to count the transaction and how to count the transaction. very simple okay let's go back to the data again okay? you don't need to go back just watch this here if i if i the first customer this customer made four transactions right then we observe this custom id number one four times the second customer this customer made only two the two transactions so we observed only two number two of the customer ID, right? So it means that when we count uh, how many we observe, how many times we observe the same customer ID and that that number, that, that number of the observation is the same as the frequency, same as the number of the transactions, right? So we are gonna, what we are gonna do is that we are gonna count uh, the count the customer ID, the customer ID. Okay, so we're gonna use the ID again. So click this ID and then drag it. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, right, right. No, 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 yeah, I was. Yeah, I'm just really confused. So, okay, so drag it and drop into the values again. Okay, so this custom ID yeah, is used twice. First, it goes to rows and it goes to values. Okay, then 
here, the summary is the summation. We need to change this from summation to count. To do that, click this I icon, or if you are using the windows, it would be small, uh -huh. the triangle, and click the button, and the click the last one in the uh, drop down menu. Okay. Then you can see this pivot table field, the dialog, and then just click this count. Okay, click count, and then the summary, yeah, switch it to the count of ID. Then click OK. Then now you can see the values change it from the sum of ID to count of ID. Then let's go back to the table. Now here we can see that the first customer uh, made four transactions in the entire time period. The second customer made two transactions in the entire time period. But we want to compute the frequency only in the calibration period. And we want to just ignore the first transaction. So we, we want to count only the, uh, the transactions from the second one, okay? But to do that, we need to do one more thing. Here, this period variable, this period variable distinguish between the calibration period and the validation period and the first transaction and the other transaction, right? So click this period variable, okay? And then drag it and drop it into the columns here. And then now we can see more details. The first customer, this customer made two transactions in the calibration period. Okay. Actually it's three transactions, but one is the first, right? So the, the this customer, yeah, just uh, made two transactions, okay, in the calibration period where yeah, we are gonna use to compute the, 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 the uh, outlet the metrics. And in the validation period, this customer yeah, made only one transaction. Second customer, in total, this customer made two transactions, but one is the first transaction, so it will not uh, be used in analysis. It will not be used to compute the frequency here. So only the second transaction yeah, will be used to compute the frequency. So that's why we have only one here. Third, fourth, fifth, all of them are just one-time purchase, one-time the, the customer, okay? So they made only one uh, purchases. So yeah, their frequency yeah, will be just zero here, okay? nothing. Six one, this customer, oh, this customer made a lot of the transactions during the entire time period, the 16 times and half with, was half, well, Half of them were made in the calibration period, but the first one yeah, will be removed to compute the frequency. So only the seven yeah, is the counted as the frequency uh, during the calibration period. And the other transactions yeah, were made in the validation period. Okay. So that's the table, yeah, that's the information we have. Okay. So these, these numbers in this calib column that is the frequency metric yeah, in the calibration period. Okay. And one more thing, let's look at this valid part, the valid column. This column yeah, displays the frequency in the validation period, which is one of the yeah, good indicator for the customer profitability during the validation period. So we are gonna use these two columns, the calibration period, these the, the numbers in this column, yeah, is the frequency metric, and this the numbers in this column will be used to compute the frequency scores. And then we are gonna divide the customer, we are gonna have to classify the customer by these numbers 
into two different groups. And then we are gonna compute the average of the frequency in the validation period. If our FM works well, the high frequency group, the group of the customers who relatively purchased more times in the calibration period must show higher the frequency in the validation period compared to the, the other yeah, group, the low frequency in the calibration period group. Okay, That's what we are going to do. So we are going to use these two numbers in these two columns. And then Uh, just, just in case, so please save your spreadsheet. Oh, oh and we need to change. Uh, we need to rename uh, this sheet. So please double click the name of this sheet in the bottom of the Excel window. Then you can change. So you're going to use the name of this sheet, uh, the pivot table. One, okay. This is case sensitive, okay. So please be careful. And in our material, yeah, you can see, yeah, which name I'm using here. So this one, pivot table one and PNT, they are capital. All right. And then let's go back to the raw data sheet one. Now, the next step is the monetary value metric. Again, we are going to use the, uh, the pivot table again. So go to the insert tab and make another pivot table by clicking this pivot table icon. And Excel automatically detected the range of the data, the entire data, and click just OK. Then now you have another yeah, pivot table. So let me zoom in. Okay, then again, okay. this time, yeah, we are going to compute the monetary value of each customer. Okay, so in each row stands for each customer, right? So again, we are going to use the ID variable, uh, sorry, the ID variable, and then place this ID variable into the rows box here. Then you can see the all the customers, customer IDs here. And this time we are going to compute the monetary value. And what is the definition of the monetary value? That is just the net spending. Okay. And then net spending means that the sum of the spending. And where is the spending information? This spend variable variable it contains the spending, how much yeah, each customer spent in each transaction. Then we just need to sum, we just need to compute the sum of the the spend variable for each customer, right? So the spend variable should be in uh, used in this values box. So click spend variable and drag it and drop into the values box. Then you can see that oh, the summary of the value is the sum of the spend. That's what we are we want. Okay, that's what we want to compute, right? So we don't need to change. So just keep it as it is. And let's look at the first customer. In total, this guy spent about $100, right? And let's look at the sixth customer. Wow, this guy spent more than $1,100. Wow. Think about the this data. Think about that this data yeah, is for the time period from 1997 to 1998, it means that about 22 or 23 years ago. Wow, at that time, just spent $1,100 for the songs, the CD, music CD. Wow, maybe, yeah, this guy, yeah, was kind of a, a rich guy, right? Anyway, okay, this sum of the, this net spending value, hmm? is the sum of the spending 
during the entire time period, but we want to compute the monetary value only for the calibration period and then uh, except for the first transaction, right? So again, we need to, uh, the number, the, we need to uh, the net spending more, yeah, uh, detailedly, okay? So click this period, okay? And put this period variable into this columns box, okay? that as we did uh, for the uh, frequency metric, then now we can see the each customers, the net spending level, net spending values in more yeah, the details, okay? Here, the first customer, this customer spent, okay, about $29 yeah, at, in the first transaction. And the in during the calibration period, except for the first transaction, this customer spent about forty-five dollars, and in the validation period, this guy spent about twenty-six dollars. That's the information we have. Okay. How about the sixth customer, yeah, the rich guy, the heavy user? Okay, this customer spent about thirty-six dollars in the first purchase, and. <clears> this <throat> customer spent about more than five hundred dollars yeah, during the calibration period, and in the valuation period, this guy spent about five hundred fifty-four dollars, about five hundred fifty-five. Wow, a lot. Okay, so that's that's our yeah information yeah for the monetary value. So the numbers in this calibration, calib column is the monetary value in the calibration period. And the numbers in this validation period, that is the monetary value in the validation period, which means that the net spending yeah, in the validation period, okay? So we are gonna classify the customers into two different groups based on the numbers in this calib, calib column, okay? And the first group, yeah, there are the customers who just, whose net spending, yeah, was relatively high compared to the customers in the other group, okay? And then if this LFM works well, the first group with high value of the monetary value, Hmm? must show high value of or high net spending level in the validation period, okay? And then let's check it, okay? Let's look at it, yeah. That's what we are gonna do with the monthly value. So we are gonna use the numbers in this calibration period, uh, the, this calib column and the numbers in this valid column, okay? Again, the change, uh, the rename the sheet. So double click this sheet three, then you can change the name of this sheet. So I'm gonna use pivot table two. All right, so here page, yeah, three, in the bottom of the page three, yeah, you can see the name that I'm using here for this sheet. Okay. Then, now let's compute the recency. All right, so go back to the raw data, sheet one, and then just click any non-empty cell and click insert and click pivot table. Then Excel automatically detected the range of the data. Click okay. And let me zoom in. All right. And this time, we are gonna compute the recency, the recency metric. And what is the definition of the recency? Okay. Here, the recency, yeah, should it be, recency is defined as the 
date of the last transaction, the date of the last purchase. Okay, then again, how can he get the date of the last purchase? The last purchase, it means that the date yeah, is the most recent, right? The date of the last purchase, yeah, is the most recent. It means that this date variable of the last purchase should be the maximum, okay? So we are gonna summarize the data by the maximum value of the date for each customer. And then that maximum value indicates the date of the last purchase, okay? So that's the our strategy. So first, yeah, again, yeah, we are going to put this ID variable into rows, okay? And then into the values, we are going to put the date, date. And then the summary is basically set as the sum. We are going to need, we, we, are, we are going to change this. So click this I icon. Then here, you can see this max, okay? So click max and click OK, then now you can see the maximum value of the date for each customer. And then that is the date of the last purchase made by each customer. But again, we need to, when we want to look at the last purchase date, only in the calibration period, okay? So, <clears throat> We need to look at, and we need to uh, see only uh, the, the maximum value of the date only in the calibration period. To do that, this time we are gonna use this filter feature, the filters feature. So the period variable, it contains the information about the which period each uh, transaction were made. Okay, so click this period and place this into the filters box. Okay, and then you can see that yeah, there's yeah, two cells in the top of the sheet. Now we can yeah, make a filter. Just click this all, okay? And there's a small yeah, button and click this small button then you can pick which time period uh, you are gonna use to compute the maximum value of the date variable. We want to use, we want to compute the maximum uh, value of the date variable only in the calibration period. And this time we are gonna include the first transaction because yeah if we if we exclude the first transaction and then yeah the Excel cannot compute the maximum value because yeah for the on for the one time customer yeah when we exclude the first transaction and there is no transaction so yeah Excel cannot compute the maximum value of the date Excel cannot get the maximum get the last purchase because there's no purchase okay so this time, yeah, we are gonna include the first transaction yeah, only for this recency metric. So you just need to uh, uncheck this valid period, okay? And then do not click this, okay? And then just close this window. Then you can see, yeah, there are multiple items. Yeah, it means that we are gonna use these two different yeah, the indicators, the first and then Kelly. And then only for uh, the data in the first transaction, the data of the first transaction and data or in the calibration period, then the pivot table yeah, compute, computed the maximum value of the date, which is the date of the last purchase in the calibration period. And that's the recency metric. So we have the recency metric here. 
and just yeah change the name of the sheet so double click the name of the sheet in the bottom of, in the bottom of the your Excel spreadsheet Excel application double click this okay and then I'm going to use the pivot table three as the name of the this sheet okay then in our uh, yeah, lab material, yeah, page four, yeah, you can see, yeah, which name, yeah, I'm using here, the pivot, table three and P and T are capital. All right, then now we computed the recency metric, the frequency metric, the multivariate metric, and then let's compute the recency score, frequency score, and monthly value score, okay? But before doing that, just gather the all the frequency, uh, recency frequency and monthly value matrix into one spreadsheet. Okay, so let's do just bring it all together first. Okay, to do that, just uh, make a new sheet by clicking this plus button here. Okay. So click this and then you can make a, a, a new spreadsheet here. Just let me zoom in. And then we are gonna label the columns. So the first column uh, is the column for the custom ID. Second column is the column of recency metric. The other one is frequency metric. The fourth one is the monetary value. The next one is the frequency in the validation period. So yeah, for to be uh, to avoid the confusion, yeah, I'm gonna use a little bit different names. So valid dot freak. And the next column, yeah, is gonna be used the dash spending yeah during the validation periods the valid that spend yeah, that's the variable name I'm gonna use so yeah make this table like this okay, and make the labels like this and then move on to cell a2 then here we are gonna copy the numbers in the pivot tables and paste it into this spreadsheet, but not manually, okay? We are gonna use the Excel equation, yeah, for this job. How? So for your convenience, yeah, I already put what you have to enter in each cell. So first, in cell A2, you need to put this first equation, okay? So just drag, okay, just select this equation in your lab material, and then just copy it by clicking Command C or Control C, okay? And then go back to the Excel, and in cell A2, we need to put this into the cell A2 and then paste it. Command V or Control V. Uh oh, come on. Ah. I'm sorry, it doesn't work. Yeah, because of the font. Yeah, yeah. So there's some sort of problem. So because of the font, yeah, this is weird. Okay, so, okay, don't using this strategy, okay? Don't use this strategy. So we are not gonna to copy and paste of the equations here. Yeah, just let's do the typing, okay? So here, yeah, just let me delete this. All right, I'm really sorry. Just put the equality mark to start the equation here and the ID 
in any pivot table, you can find the ID, but let's use the first pivot table, pivot table one. So put the pivot table one, okay? So just for your convenience, convenience, so let me, oh. Okay. Again, quality mark, pivot table one, and then put the exclamation mark, okay? And cell A5 contains the first customer's ID. So put A5 and press enter. Then you can get the first customer's ID like this, right? And then, Let's move on to the cell B2. We need to copy the recency value of the first customer and then put the equality mark again here. And the pivot table three contains the recency metric. So pivot table three. And again, the exclamation mark again. And cell B4, this time B4, okay? B4 contains the recency metric of the first customer, and then press enter. Yeah, the last purchase date, yeah, of the first customers in the calibration period. Frequency, pivot table one, yeah, it, it contains the frequency information, right? So start with the equality mark and pivot table one again, an exclamation, and Cell B5, cell B5 in this pivot table contains the frequency metric of the first customer. Okay, so press enter. That's two. And monetary. Pivot table two, this contains the monetary value information. Okay, so start with the full little mark and pivot table two, exclamation. And okay, B5, cell B5 yeah, has the monetary value matching of the first customer, okay, and press enter, mm -hmm. All right? Here, I'm not using, yeah, I'm not using <coughs> this, a, the quotation mark here. So you can just ignore this quotation mark. You can just, put the name of the, uh, the sheet name here, okay? So do not put this, yeah, quotation mark here, okay? Just, yeah, remove the quotation mark in your equation. I'm really sorry. Yeah. The confusion. And then valid frequency. Oh, but yeah, you can use the, uh, this a the, the, the quotation mark. So okay, let's try. So what? Let's look at what uh, would happen when you include the uh, when you include the quotation mark here. Okay, and again we need to get the frequency value, but this time we need to use we need to get the frequency in the validation period. And then where is the frequency information? The people table one. So Quotation mark here and pivot table one and quotation mark again and exclamation mark and in cell D5, D5, yeah, we can get the frequency value in the validation period. So put D5, okay? Then press enter, then you can get it, okay? And the quotation mark here was automatically deleted. Okay, let's look at this formula bar. The quotation mark is automatically deleted. Okay, so you just need to, you you, you can just you know, exclude the quotation mark in the equation, or you can just add the quotation mark in the equation. Whatever is fine, okay? All right, and the last one, the net spending. That is the monetary value. So we need to refer to the pivot table two. So start with the equality mark again, and then, pivot table two and the exclamation mark 
And again, D5, cell D5, yeah, has the information of the net spending of the first customer. So, and then press enter. Now we copy, successfully copied the first customer's information, all information. What we have to do, we just need to copy all these equations down to the column, uh, row of the last customer. Again, there are, how many customers? Yeah, there are, uh, oh. oh, sorry. We need to compute the more value first. Okay. So just, just let me follow the steps yeah, in the lab material. Yeah. Okay. Then next, yeah, we need to use the more columns. Okay. So those three values, they are recency frequency monetary value metric. This time we need to compute the scores or the ranks or the code, okay? So this time I'm gonna uh, name this column as recency dot code. The next one is frequency dot code. And the next one is Monetary that code. Make these three variables. All right. And then, yeah, this time, yeah, this method works. So go back to your LEM material. And in page five, you can see the three equations. Okay. The first, copy the first equation. So select the first equation and press the command C or control C, okay? And go back to Excel in column G2 and paste it here. You can see the equation, all right? Oh, sorry. In the same manner, you can copy the second equation, command C and paste it into cell H2 to the same thing. Copy this, paste it here. All right, then you may have these numbers two, two, two. What this equation is doing, okay? So there is an if statement and there is a median statement, okay? So we using these two functions or statement. And first, let me explain what this median means, okay? So the median returns the value, just uh, the middle value, not the average, that is yeah, just the middle value. When we sort the numbers and then, let's think about this. So when we sort the nine numbers and the fifth one, yeah, is the middle. There are the numbers greater than fifth, fifth one, and there are four numbers smaller than this fifth one, okay? When you sort nine numbers, okay? That fifth number, that is the median, okay? So the number at the first half or the minimum value of the first half is the median, okay? So, this statement, yeah, <clears throat> and this function says, oh, let's compute Excel, let's compute the median value. Uh -huh. The median value in the range of this data, okay? So we have 20, 20, uh, 2,357 customers. So this row, 2,000, the, the row 2358, that is the row for the last customer, okay? So in column B, it's from B2 to B3. 
2358. So in what is the column B? So the, the recency, okay? So in the all the customer's recency values, the, let's compute the median of the recency value. Then now let's talk about the if, let, let me talk about the if statement. Here, the first part, if the if statement has this, these three arguments here, one, these three input values, one, two, three, and the first one is the condition. So B2, if B2 is greater than the median, huh, it means that when you sort the numbers in the descending order, then the first half is the kind of the biggest value, the big bigger values than the values of the, the values bigger than the values in the second half, right? And then this is a recency metric. Okay. So the bigger value indicates the <clears throat> uh, more recent date. Okay. So it means that the recency value is recency, the B2, that is the recency value of the customer, custom number one, right? So the, the first customer's recency metric, the recency, the last purchase date is greater than the median of the recency value, that is the, it, it, then it means that the last purchase date of the first customer is in the first half of the last purchase date of the entire customers. And then that means that the customer's last purchase date is relatively more recent. So put that customer into the group number one. If not, put this customer into group number two. That's the meaning of this if statement, okay? In the same manner, yeah, we can divide the customer into two, another set of the two different groups, okay? So here, if the frequency of the first customer is greater than the median of the frequency of all the customers, then that customer is classified into the group one by frequency and group two, if not, yeah, this customer, yeah is assigned to the second group yeah, by frequency to the same thing for the monetary value, okay? So separately, yeah, independently, independently, we divided the customers into two different groups and two different groups and two different groups by recency metric, by frequency metric, and by monetary value metric, okay? That's what we do, but, still, but at this moment, we have only the data for the first customer, right? So we need to do this for all the other customers, right? So to do so, just copy these cells from A2 to I2, and then move your mouse cursor over this small rectangular button, and then Click it and drag it down to row. So don't release your mouse button. So you need to still yeah, press the mouse button. So go down and down and down and down and down and down. Down, 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 down. down. A little, bit, little bit faster, 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 faster. Almost there, almost there, almost there, almost there. Yo, oh, I passed. Until 23.58. Here, 23.58. All right, then you can see the last customer's customer ID, 23. Uh, 57. All right, then press command upward arrow or press control and upward arrow. Then you can go back to the top of the table. 
Then now we can get the classification result based on the recency and the frequency and method value. Okay, and the number of the group, yeah, classified by the by each metric, that is the recency code or recency score. So here, this one means this customer is classified into high recency group. Mm -hmm. And let's look at the second customer. Second customer's recency code or the recency score is two. It means that this customer is classified into the low recency group, okay? And sixth one, this customer, yeah. This customer's recency code is one again. So it means that this customer is classified into high recency group. Hmm? His or her last purchase date is relatively more recent than the others. Let's look at the frequency code. That means the frequency score and this value is one for the first customer. It means that the first customer is classified into the high frequency group. And let's look at the third customer. This customer is classified into the low frequency group. Okay. That be three to six is one. This customer is classified into the high frequency group. You can interpret the same, you, you can yeah, interpret the monetary code or the monetary score in the same manner. Okay. So that's the information we can get in this spreadsheet okay and then yeah we're almost there but before <clears throat> uh, moving on to the next step now it's time to take a look at our the uh the the the, the, the questions in the lab okay so let's go to so just please open your answer sheet file. So put your name here, put your date here. And let's look at, uh, let's read the first question. Complete the following statement. Columns, recency, frequency, and monetary. They are, again, okay, they are showing the recency metric, frequency metric, and monetary value metric, okay, here. Indicate the date of the most recent purchase, the date of the last purchase, and the number of the purchases made in the category in some period. And then, oh, sorry, I already told you the correct answer for the first black. And the amount of the net spending in which period? Calibration period. Okay. And then we are now going to classify the customers. I already explained this, right? Uh, we are now going to going to classify the customers by these three variables and calculate the averages of the purchase frequency and the net spending. That's what we are gonna do in the next step during what? The validation period. So column E and column F, that is the purchase frequency in the validation period and the net spending in the validation period. So the second plan should be validation, okay? For each customer, class to validate the LFM rule. Okay, to validate the power of LFM of the customer targeting. If the RFM rule is valid, it means that RFM analysis works well, the high recency group or high frequency group or high monetary value group will show higher purchase frequency and larger net spending during the validation period, right? That's the, what we are gonna do, the holdout validation, okay? Then the low recency, low frequency, and low monetary value group. Again, I already told you, this technique is called holdout validation, okay? So here, we have three terms, new terms. 
calibration period, validation period, and hold out validation. Okay. Then the purpose of this question is that you must uh, correctly know the definition of these terms. Okay. And yeah, I already told you the correct answer for this question. So please, uh, please, yeah, just refer. You can just refer to the the our the lecture notes and this video. So yeah, please, please, please place the correct answer correctly. Okay. And let's look at the question number two. What do the numbers mean in oh summary sheet? This summary is that the spreadsheet we use. Yeah, here. So this sheet, the summary sheet. Oh, I've not just changed the name of this sheet. Yeah, right. Oh, I didn't rename this. Okay, so we need to rename this. Here, double click this sheet five. Okay, and rename it summary. Okay. Then let's go back to, oh, sorry. Let's go back to the word. What do the numbers mean in summary sheet? Complete the following statement. All right. Customers read recency code one. Again, recency code one means recency score is equal to one. It means that, that the customers with this number, recency code one, are classified into the high recency group. It means that the high recency group compared to the low recency group, yeah, the people in the high recency group made their last purchases more recently, okay? More recently in the calibration period, okay? That's the definition of the recency code is equal to one. Recency code is equal to one. That means the customers, that customer yeah, is in the high recency group. And what is the definition of high recency group? It means that the last purchase relatively more recent okay, than the <clears throat> customers yeah, in the low recency group, okay? So yeah. You can interpret this and then you can yeah, correctly select yeah, which word out of these two should be placed here. And in the same manner, yeah, you can interpret the meaning of the frequency code one. It means that the customers with frequency code one are classified into high frequency group. Okay? It means that they show, yeah, they made more or less, more purchases in the calibration period than the group of the frequency code two. And you can do the same thing for the monetary code. So yeah, that's the question number two. And then let's move on to the next step, the prediction. All right. <clears throat> it takes a long time. So yeah, let's make a, short break and then let's see yeah see you again in the second video all right see you soon <laughs>